Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. And uh, we'll begin reading in that first verse. And let's read in unison tonight down to verse number 5. The Bible says, O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. I want to talk tonight for just a few minutes on the principles in Thanksgiving. Some principles in Thanksgiving. We've been talking an awful lot about Thanksgiving last Wednesday night and uh, for uh, the, the Thanksgiving Eve service this morning and tonight as well, last Sunday. Uh, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Uh, and again, that theme of Thanksgiving, as I said this morning, over 140 verses or 140 times, uh, thanks, thanksgiving, thankfulness is mentioned in, in the scriptures. And many of those times are found right here in the book of Psalms. Uh, again, I think it ought to be a, a daily um, a, a daily. Uh, place where we go and, and, and read and refresh our souls as we think about uh, our great God and are reminded to be thankful to him. Uh, one of the signs of apostasy, one of the signs of the end times are, uh, is ingratitude and unthankfulness. If you look at Romans chapter 1, the, the downward spiral into depravity starts with an unthankful heart. And when we, when we fail to be thankful, we, we really take for granted everything. Um, I said uh, this morning to, or this afternoon, to the folks at the manor, if God were to take away everything we failed to thank him for from the previous day, how much would we have left? And uh, there, there's so much, uh, as the lady saying, there's so much to be thankful for. Uh, we, we told you about our house, and we just set out to put a new tub surround in there, and well, that became a, a major project and forced the Rosses to find showers uh, outside our, our homestead, and that was a bit of fun. Um, but I, I, I honestly, I thank God for our shower. After the, the shower uh, stall got put in there, I, I thank God for not having to go outside my house to take a shower. I thank God for warm water. And you ever try to take a shower in cold water? That, that'll wake you up in a hurry, amen? You'll thank God for hot water if you don't have any. And I began to think about that, that little principle of if God were to take away or remove from our lives everything we failed to thank him for, how much would we have left? I, I thank God for those things. Thank God for the, the little things and the big things. Uh, Brother Matt was thanking God for, for some things over at the, the prison on Thursday night, and he said, I began to think about some things. I thank God for, for socks on my feet, amen? And, you know, if I didn't have socks on my feet, you know, my feet would get rubbed raw by the shoes I wear. I mean, think about these things. I mean, there's so much. I mean, from the little to the great for and everything in between, we have got truly so much to be thankful for, and especially here in America. When I read our missions letters, especially uh, uh, letters like uh, uh, the ones that Brother Barnhouse uh, sends to us from Zambia and, and the folks living in, in, in mud huts and grass huts over there and have very, very little, and I think about how much we have on every hand and, and to an abundance, we, we really have no excuse to be unthankful and, and unappreciative of all that God's done for us. And so uh, one last uh, go around here for, uh, for thankfulness and, and, and thanksgiving. I just want to get it settled in our hearts that we ought to be grateful people and not numbered among the the, ingra the, the, the folks that are ungrateful for all that God's done. Uh, if you're having trouble being thankful, then there's just a, a problem up here with being with being thoughtful and, and, and aware of all the many blessings that God's poured out. So, again, there's no excuse for us tonight as we look at Scripture. Father in heaven, thank you so much for loving us, for giving us your word. And what a precious gift the word of God is. Abraham Lincoln said your word was your greatest gift to mankind. Now, I might take up issue and say Jesus Christ certainly was that greatest gift, and salvation through Jesus Christ would be the greatest gift, but, Lord, how will we know about Jesus Christ without your word? And so, Lord, we do thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the truths it contains, and thank you, Lord, for the admonitions and the examples of thanksgiving that we find in it. And, Lord, I pray that tonight, of all people, you'd find a thankful people here at Heritage. Uh, Lord, just uh, want to uh, just uh, express our appreciation for all that you've done, for all that you are. Lord, for your promises, Lord, uh, that have yet to be fulfilled, we know that they will come true. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this time to gather together as a church family. Uh, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the singing we've heard tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful special the choir sang for us, uh, the congregational singing, Lord, the singing by the young ladies. Lord, just the, the chance, uh, the, the, the opportunities we have to fellowship one with another. And, uh, and, Lord, just everything that you do, you're so good to us. And, Lord, tonight we just pray that, Lord, we would, ha we would find and cultivate within us uh, grateful, thankful hearts. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. This psalm is a pretty involved psalm as, as the psalmist goes through the, uh, the, the history um, 
of, of, of the nation, his nation, the people of Israel. And, and again, it's, it's something well worth reading and, 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 and becoming attuned to. But uh, in the first several verses, we see uh, what I would like to say, just some, some definite principles in thanksgiving. One of these principles we find, uh, at, and to get right to the point uh, tonight, uh, is, is found uh, in, in that first verse there, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Uh, one of the principles in Thanksgiving, as we've talked and said uh, a number of different times, Wednesday night, uh, this morning, and now again tonight, is that praise ought to be a part of our Thanksgiving. Uh, praising God because he's done great things for us. Praising God because uh, from him all blessings flow. And so praise is there. Uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Uh, the Lord ought to be the object of our gratitude, of our thanksgiving. The Lord, uh, because he's made these things possible. He has been the one that has provided them for us. He's been the one that has has uh, uh, brought them to us. And so uh, the, uh, the object of our praise is the Lord himself. So, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. We also see this, uh, this principle of praise. Not only in verse number one, we see it also in verse number two. Uh, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. So again, that praise uh, uh, takes the form of our, our singing as well. Uh, again, uh, not only should our thanks be the, uh, 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 give thanks in the Lord, uh, uh, him being the object of our gratitude, singing psalms unto him, he also ought to be the object of our singing. Not only the object of our gratitude, but the object of our singing. And then in verse three, we see these words, glory ye in his holy name. Uh, uh, these praises, that word glory there is, is, is a, a, a related uh, a word to the word praise there. Uh, the main subject uh, of our praises ought to be the name of God. And think about how many names God is known by in the Bible, Jehovah, uh, and all the, the attachments to Jehovah, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu. I mean, all those different names that tell us about the attributes of God and the, and the glory of God. Uh, uh, the name Lord, uh, uh, and he is king of kings and lord of lords, uh, but glory to his name. Uh, he is a wonderful God. Uh, we, 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 in, in, in the Lord's model prayer, Jesus Christ uh, uh, teaches us when we pray, um, he said, uh, after this manner, therefore pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, his name ought to be revered, amen, and praised by us. And that name ought to be the sweetest name uh, that we ever hear, that we ever get to speak. And that's why uh, the sin of taking God's name as a profanity is such a vile sin. Uh, we look at it and say, well, you know, it's not it, on the list of sins. It's not one of the biggies. I happen to believe it is. You're taking the name of Almighty God, taking the name of our Creator and our Savior, and using it as a cuss word. Boy, what, what, a, what a horrible thing. And, and again, we ought to guard our hearts and, and guard our ears from hearing that and, and certainly remove ourselves from folks that uh, would be so blasphemous as to take the holy and hallowed and revered and, 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 and reverential name of Almighty God and dragging it down and making it a gutter word and making it a, a word of profanity when it ought to be a word that we, uh, that, that we would uh, uh, be very careful to handle in our own conversation. I think it's very fascinating. I read the Jerusalem Post uh, almost every day, probably every other day, I read the Jerusalem Post to see what's going on. I don't like the filter of, of the mainstream media in America. I think they're a bunch of liars um, and, and certainly have an agenda, and it's not a very American agenda. That's just my opinion. You can take it as you will, but I think there's a definite and very derogatory bias. Uh, it, when, when the news media can call Fidel Castro a hero and, and liken him to George Washington, there's a big, big problem going on in our media. Uh, Fidel Castro uh, was a murderer and, and an evil man along the lines of Stalin and Hitler. You say, Pastor Ross, you're getting hyperbole right now. That man was a butcher. And for, me, for people in media and people in politics to say he was a good man, uh, uh, go to Cuba sometimes, away from the lights, and see the, de the, 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 the deplorable conditions that those folks, they say the average worker in Cuba makes $20 a month. $20 a month, and it's a paradise. Now, I'm, I'm going to skirt around outside of politics right now. Uh, but again, I read the Jerusalem Post, and I find it fascinating. When they mention the name of God, they don't write God out. They write G apostrophe D. That's how much they revere the name of God. You say, Pastor Ross, that's superstitious. I think it's being very reverential. I, I think it shows that they have an appreciation for the name of Almighty God. And I think we would do well to get back to that where, you know, uh, you know typing out OMG, not good. Oh my, that, that, that's not the way God's name is to be used. God's name ought to be used in, in our praises. He ought to be used in our thanksgiving. He used, ought to be used in our adoration. Uh, again, when we come to his name, uh, we, we glory in his holy name. Uh, we sing praises or we make the, the subject of his name the praises. And so uh, just as um, God is the object of our gratitude and, 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 and the object of our singing, he also ought to be the object of our praise. His name ought to be the object of our praise. 
when it comes to our thanksgiving, uh, praise ought to be part of that. We ought to be willing and ready and able to praise God at the drop of a hat, at, at, at a moment's notice, at even just the, the thought of, of his goodness. There ought to, the praise ought to just flow out of our hearts as we think about how good God is and how wonderful our great God is. The praise is, uh, in, in these verses, this praise is for former mercies and blessings and benefits and, and the answers that God's given us and the helps. We can look back and thank him and, and praise him and, and, and sing unto him because of everything he's already done for us. And then let me just say this. If we look back in our lives and, and stir up our remembrance, I'll tell you what, we would find an innumerable uh, source of, uh, of objects to praise God for, for all the things he's done in our lives. I was telling the crowd on Wednesday night, if you're here Wednesday night, uh, when we were cleaning up our home for Thanksgiving, uh, I, I found two of my old Bibles. I found the Bible that I was given when I was confirmed uh, back in August of 1980, and that was a Bible after I got saved that I began to read and take notes in, and, and that, was, that was such a, a precious part of my early Christian life, and, and to hold that Bible in my hands once again, and that was something special to me. It's in my office right now. It's in like 30 pieces, amen? Uh, but it was a worn-out Bible, and, and I wore it out, amen, reading it and, and, and trying to learn from it. And, and I thank God for that Bible. And there's another Bible in my office as well. It was a Bible that I asked for for Christmas. Uh, other kids were asking for toys. I asked for a Bible. My mom and dad had to be scratching their head. What's wrong with our son? Did he take a sharp blow on the baseball diamond or, or what? But he asked for a Bible. I don't think they thought that. But uh, that was that's what I wanted for Christmas. It was a special reference Bible, and I was really into prophecy and studying uh, end times and things like that. And so there was this Bible called the Salem Kirban Reference Bible, and it had a whole bunch of prophecy in there. And boy, I tell you what, that Bible is also worn out. It's held together with shipping tape, amen, uh, that I that I uh, got from the warehouse. And when the cover began to fall apart, I put some of that uh, that uh, uh, brown shipping tape on there, and that became my binder. But that uh, that Bible, again, is such a special part. Uh, and I look back and, and how much truth I gained out of reading those Bibles and how many times uh, the words out of the, uh, my time in that Bible comforted me and strengthened me and guided me and, and gave me hope and, and gave gave me strength and gave me uh, uh, security, I, I can look back over my life and say, you know what, God's been good to me. Why? The, the, these are praises for former blessings and for former mercies and for former answers to prayer and for former uh, uh, goodness that God has bestowed upon us. Praise ought to be part of our thanksgiving. What else do we see here in verse number one? Not only the praise, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, but we see also prayer. Call upon his name. How do we express our thanksgiving to God? How do we express our thanks to God? By taking time to commune with him. That's prayer. How does a person, how does a child talk to their father? They talk to our heavenly father through prayer. So just like our praise thanks him for the former things done, our prayer is that, that, that means by which we, we communicate with him. The Bible says call upon his name. Uh, not only that, uh, uh, in verse number three, look at these words. Um, uh, uh, let the heart of them that rejoice that seek the Lord. Uh, verse number four, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Where do we do our seeking from God? We do our seeking uh, of God in our, in our prayer closet as we, we pour out our hearts to him. I like what the Bible says in Matthew 7 and 8. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. If you take that ask, seek, and knock, that, that, uh, the acronym ASK, that's pray. What's the word pray means? It means to ask. And so as we communicate with God and we pray to God and, and speak with God, we see that, that that's part of our thanksgiving as well. Uh, we, we call upon his name. We seek the Lord and in, in, his, in his strength, and we seek his face evermore. Uh, uh, part of our thanksgiving to God is spending time alone with him and, yes, thanking him, but also speaking with him and seeking him through prayer and seeking to, to know him better and, and, and pouring out our hearts and our, our desires toward him. Friend, a child of God that, that is not spending any time alone with God is, is not a very strong child of God. We need, we need our prayer clauses. We need our, our time with God. There's no substitute for that. I've taught the principle, and I think I've taught it uh, uh, fairly well, but you know what? There's no substitute for spiritual, for spiritual exercises. You can't read enough Bible to make up for a lack of prayer. You can't attend church enough to make up for a lack of Bible reading. Amen? Everything has to be taken in its place and in its course. And so if we're not reading our Bible, there's nothing we can do to make up for a lack of Bible reading. If we're not going to our time in prayer, there's nothing we can do to make up for that lack of prayer. If we're missing church services, there's nothing we can do in our Christian life that will ever make up for, the, for, for, for uh, absenting ourselves from the, from the fellowship and the gathering of the saints. There's nothing we can do to make that up. You can't read enough Bible to make up for lack of church or spend enough time in the prayer closet to make up for lack of church. It doesn't work that way. Well, I miss church this week, so I'm going to have you up in my Bible reading. I miss church this week, so I'm going to have you in my prayer closet. It's great to do those things, but again, they can't bring the design comfort and the design help that, that, that being a member of a body of, of believers can, 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 uh, can, can bring to the child of God. We need the fellowship of the saints. 
It encourages us. It, it edifies us. That was God's design on the church. And having said that, there's no substitute for Bible reading. Well, Pastor Ross, I was in all three services this week, but did you read your Bible on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday? We need the Word of God daily. Amen? And there's no substitute for not having it. And can I say this? Sometimes we, we go without praying. Why should I pray? God knows everything anyway. No, God wants us to commune with him. God looks forward to that time. Just like God, when he put Adam in the garden, and we understand even before the fall that God had a pattern of walking with Adam in the cool of the day, God looks forward to spending time with his children. Most, most normal parent-child relationships, the parent and children like spending time with each other. Amen? And so too does our Heavenly Father like spending time with his children. Where does he get to spend one-on-one -on -one time? In prayer. So part of thanksgiving is not only our praising of God for all the former things that he's done for us and has, uh, has shown us and, and the helps he's given to us, but, but it's also that, 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 that part of us that, 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 that seeks him out in, in, in prayer. And, and so what is, what is prayer? Prayer is, is for the future mercies that we need. I don't know what's on the morrow, but my God does. I'm going to ask you to hold your place there in Psalms and turn with me to James chapter 4. I don't know what's on the morrow. N no, nobody does, but our Father does. And so what is prayer? Prayer is seeking God's help for what lies on the morrow. James chapter number 4. Look at verse 13, please. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 13, Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. For, for somebody to boast and say, well, uh, and again, we lay out our plans there, expecting the Lord to keep us alive and uh, all things being told, and the Lord continues his grace toward us and lets things continue as they are, we make our plans. But again, we make those plans knowing uh, that it's of the Lord's will that those things be carried out. Prayer is us saying, God, we don't know what's on the morrow. We're going to commit our tomorrows to you. We're going to, we're going to put our care of tomorrow into your hands where it belongs and seek your face and, and, and seek your will and seek your power and seek your favor and seek your grace and seek your help, Lord, because we don't know what storms are coming our way. We don't know what valleys we're going to be called to, to, uh, uh, to transverse. Uh, we don't know what uh, uh, struggles we might be called to engage, but we do know that, God, you'll be there for us. And so prayer is us uh, petitioning God and, and, and praying for those future mercies. I think it interesting. Praise is for the former mercies. Prayer is for the future mercies. So we've seen the praise. That's one of the principles in the thanksgiving here. We've seen the prayer that's part of the principles in thanksgiving. But look at that last phrase in verse number one. Make known his deeds among the people. This is a promoting. I, I think God needs a better PR department. I do. The devil's got a great one. He, he, he is, he's got one going 724 everywhere you look. I mean, he, he's got people out there... Uh, promoting the, 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 the fun of sin, uh, uh, the joys in sin, uh, the, 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 the popularity of sin. I mean, he's got, he's got a million of them. Who's God's PR department? Me and you. Amen? Who, who's, let me just say this. CBS is not going to make known the glorious deeds of God. ABC is not going to get in that business of praising God. Uh, uh, all the Alphabet Soup uh, TV channels and, and media outlets, guess what? Their business is not to promote God. That's our job. And so part of Thanksgiving is saying, you know what? When God does something good, we can't just keep it a secret. We've got so many James Bonds running around out there. Everything, everything's done on the, on, uh, you know, on the QT, and nobody's allowed to know what's going on. That's not the way God designed this thing to work. God uh, designed it when he does something good that his children just can't keep it in. We've got to tell somebody. You think about this. When Jesus Christ, at the beginning of his ministry, he would heal the lepers and said, go, don't, don't tell anybody, but go and show yourself to the priests and offer up the sacrifice they tell you. But they went out and began to blaze it abroad. Amen. And why did Jesus Christ do that? It's the only time in the Bible where, where he told them to keep quiet. Well, because Jesus Christ knew it would happen. They, they were looking for a circus. They were looking for uh, uh, entertainment. And, and, and it was so, uh, uh, so much so that as they began to tell others about what Jesus had done for them, uh, again, they came to see Jesus Christ more for the miracles than to get the teaching and to get the truth that he was dispensing. And that's why in, in John chapter 6, when he started giving the hard doctrine out there, that many people walked, that di didn't walk with him anymore. And Jesus Christ in John 6, uh, verse 66, I think it's an interesting verse there. He, uh, uh, he said to the disciples, we also go away. 
because so many people walked away when he started dealing with the hard doctrines. Well, he wasn't trying to entertain the people. His miracles were not done to entertain them. His miracles were done to bring glory to God. When he, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he wasn't doing that to impress anybody there. He was doing that to confirm his power and the fact that he claimed to be the resurrection and life. He was doing that to confirm the faith of Mary and Martha and his disciples so that they would know that even though he died, he would live again. And they missed it, went right over his head. And people were marveling at the miracles uh, about him raising Lazarus from the dead. But the children of God have not been given a command to be silent. We have been given a command to promote our God and the things that he's done for us. There's a world of unbelievers out there that have not met a genuine, sincere child of God who has promoted God to them and, and, and talked of all God's wondrous deeds to them uh, uh, and, and, and stood as a testimony to their unbelief. We need to be testifying. We need to be promoting God. Make uh, known his deeds among the people. Uh, verse number two, again, we see this idea of promoting there. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Verse number five, remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. So the promoting there, that's our job. What is our job? It is to praise God and thank you for former mercies. It is to pray to God and seek his blessings and his future mercies. But it's also to promote God and to make known uh, or to promote his favorable mercies, those mercies that he's brought that have been a personal blessing to us. There are so many things that God has done for us that we've kept silent on, that we can't afford to do that. Somebody needs to hear what God's done because they're discouraged. Somebody needs to know what God's done for us because, you know what, they're struggling. Somebody needs to know what God's done for us because they're hurting, and they need to see the comfort that God's dispensed to us. They need to see the strength that God has laid out for us. They need to see the, the hope that God's given to us. Why? So that they don't falter in their faith. We have an obligation to each other to promote God. Uh, it, it's fascinating to me. And, and again, we can talk about sports all day long. We can talk about the weather. We can talk about the economy. We can talk about politics. We can talk about this. We can talk about that. But why do we get so tight-lipped and, and so uncomfortable in talking about how good God has been? Because our flesh doesn't like it. Well, somebody's going to think I'm a fanatic. Where are the, cow, where are the cow? Those Those folks... Is, the Cowboys, they play today? They played Thursday, that's right, they played Thursday, and uh, they played at Dallas. I didn't see anybody in Dallas wearing a, you know, uh, a, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, hiding themselves. It was a Dallas fan down there. They, they had their Dallas sweatshirts on, Cowboys across the front. They had their Dallas ball caps on. They had their blue and white pom-poms out there. They weren't afraid to be known as Dallas Cowboys. Why should they? Ten and one. I mean, they got a ten-game winning streak going right now. No, no shame in that. They were excited about cheering their team on. I didn't see anybody worried about what people would think about them wearing their Dallas gear into the, in, into the, into the stadium there in, 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 in Texas. Why can't we carry that kind of enthusiasm into the church house? We're all on the same team, rooting for the same team, right? I mean, not sports-wise. I know we've got some fractures in here about that. We don't need to go any further. But, I mean, we're on the same spiritual team, are we not? Then, then why should we be ashamed to talk about how good things God's done for us? Well, they'll think I'm a fanatic. You know, fanatic, shortened, it just means fan, right? We're more than fanatics. We're followers. I should say more than fans. We ought to be fanatics. A fanatic's one that won't get his mind uh, off the subject and won't change the subject. He ought to be, he's on point. Why are we so afraid at, at, at expressing our, our, our gratitude for all the things that God's done for us? Why do we get so hesitant and saying, you know what? Here's what God did for me lately. Here's a prayer that God answered for me. Here's a blessing that God sent my way. I shared this with our Sunday school class, and I shared it down at the manor when Brother Matt and I were in the, in the prison on on, did I, I don't know if I shared this here, but on Thursday night, a man came in. He was supposed to get out of prison on Wednesday, didn't get out of prison. Did I share that already with us in the, in the uh, uh, Sunday school? And, and at the manor, I thought so, okay. And uh, he came in, and, 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 and he and a couple other guys came into the Bible study on Thursday night, on, on Thanksgiving night. And uh, he said, uh, I, 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 you're, you're surprised to see me. And I said, yeah, you were told us you were getting out, uh, and we wouldn't see for Thanksgiving. He said, I was supposed to get out. He said, but... Uh, as I was getting all, all, everything taken care of to get out of here, uh, there was a hold up in, in some of the paperwork and something else had to be taken care of, and so they, they held me over. And he said I was all set to go. He said I had money for, for a bus ticket. I had money uh, to get a hotel room while I was waiting on the bus to take me home. And also I figured if, after paying for the bus ticket and paying for that hotel room, I had a little bit of money left over. I'd have just enough for a meal at McDonald's, and I would, I would get my bus ticket, uh, rent my room for the night, and, and have a meal at McDonald's, and I'd sit there uh, and, 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 and on Thanksgiving Day and, and have my McDonald's and then wait, and the next day I would go home. And he said, but 
uh, here I am. And I said, I figured something out. I said, uh, he, he said, uh, if I'd have done that, I would have been alone and eating McDonald's on Thanksgiving. He said, but the Lord kept me over today. And he said, you know what? I got today, I got a nice Thanksgiving meal with good turkey. I said, you know what? I wasn't alone today. I was with some of my brothers and we prayed together. And he said, you know what? I got to come to a Bible study and hear, hear about God's goodness. And he said, I wasn't alone. I wasn't, I, I didn't have to eat McDonald's on Thanksgiving. And I, and I was, you know, I was with my brothers in Christ. He said, so even though I'm disappointed I didn't get to go, he said, at least I wasn't alone eating McDonald's. So, and there's some blessings there. Uh, this is a guy saying this in jail that, that, that was held up from going home. And he was giving God thanks for being in prison for another day. Now, I've got a question. How can he be so willing to give his praises out to God, promote what God's done for him, even though it looked like something negative, and say, you know what, God meant it for good? Well, has not God done anything good for us where we could praise him? Even in, even in the negative things, God's still good. I'm thinking about all the times my car's broken down in my driveway. Amen? Could happen on the roadway. Could have been stranded. I remember one time getting my bike out. It was, it was a beautiful day, one of the few days where my schedule and the weather matched up, and I was going to go out for a ride and pull my bike out of the garage and fired it up and uh, uh, tramped it down into first gear and, and was getting ready to pull out. And when I put it into first gear and cranked the throttle, nothing happened. This is not supposed to be this way. And so I uh, hit the clutch again and, and tramped it down in first gear. It was in first gear. It wasn't, I went up through all my gears up into second, third, fourth, and fifth, and back down in first again. I, I had all my clutch was still working. And, and, but you know what? I put it into first gear and said, well, let's try it again. Maybe I missed something there. Maybe I had it neutral. I looked on my gauge. It said, nope, it was not a neutral. And I uh, fired it up again. Didn't go anywhere again. I looked down, and my, my, uh, my drive belt had snapped and was laying in the driveway. So, Pastor, were you mad? No, I was kind of thankful. I'm kind of glad that the drive belt snapped in the driveway rather than me out driving around. That's a heavy bike to push. <laughs> Amen? And so I didn't, have to, I didn't have to worry about that. How many times have I, I come out to see a flat tire in the driveway rather than, than somewhere uh, uh, where, where it could have been, been a problem? Amen? E even sometimes in the negative, God's, God's hand's apparent there. God's good, amen. What are we supposed to do when, when God shows his goodness to us and his goodness becomes very apparent to us? We're not supposed to hide it. We're not supposed to, to couch it away. We're supposed to let it out. We're supposed to promote. We're supposed to promote our God. God's been good to us. And it's a shame that, that, that we're so unwilling to, to promote him when he's done nothing but good for us. Make known his deeds among the people. Uh, among the people here, but among the people outside. Amen. Doesn't the Bible tell us in Psalm 107, verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy? Amen. God's redeemed me. God saved my soul. How did he do it? He sent his son Jesus Christ to die for me. We've got a wonderful time, Christmas time, to make known why we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. So we get presents. So we can eat fruitcake. So we can decorate our houses with lights. No, uh, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior. He came, as the choir sang then, he was born to die. He came to die for us. He came to save us from our sins and to pay sins penalty for all of us and for all that would come to faith in him. We get to tell that story. We get to promote the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God and the plan of God and the salvation of God to everybody that we can. And we ought to take advantage of that. Promoting God and, and what he has done and his goodness to us is part of thanksgiving as we get to tell others what good things he's done. Again, that sin of ingratitude just holds it in, act, acting like, we, uh, like it's expected or like it's deserved. I don't, I don't deserve anything from God. But he keeps pouring out and dumping blessing after blessing upon me. And what does he want? He just wants me to promote him, to let people know where it came from and to whose hand it, it flowed from. Turn with me real quick to Psalm 145. Psalm 145. Look at these verses real quickly and we'll finish up. Psalm 145, verses 4 through 6. Psalm 145, verse 4. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Mom and Dad, that's you telling your children about God and what he's done for you. Your children ought to know your testimony. We had the privilege, and the church sent us out to, uh, to Portland, Oregon, for the Rock of Ages conference out there. Brother Garris taught our Sunday school class. And he said, one thing I've done for my family is I wrote out my salvation experience, and I put that in with my important papers, so when I die, there'll be no doubt in anybody's mind when I came to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. And he said, I left that as a gift, as a testimony to my family. That's one generation declaring to another generation what God did for them. Amen? 
Mom and dad, do your kids know your salvation testimony? Have you, have you written it down somewhere? Have you written it in their hearts? So that when your time comes to, to make the, the transition from this life into the next, that there's no doubt that uh, was mom really saved? Was dad really a Christian? Uh, is that something that they are aware of that, that can comfort them in a, in a time of grieving? We, we had a funeral here two weeks ago, and, and, uh, and, 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 and I had the privilege of talking to, 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 to the mom that had passed away before she did and was able to comfort her daughter when I went to her hospital room and she died of cancer. I, I was talking to her, and she was in obvious pain, but we talked, and I confirmed her testimony of salvation uh, uh, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was able to share that with the folks at the funeral. Do you know how tough it is to do a funeral when you're not sure where that, uh, have any reasonable doubt as to where the deceased is at? That's a hard thing. What comfort can you give somebody that has no clear-cut testimony of salvation? I would like to stand and, have, you know, whoever, whatever preacher does my funeral, if there's ever one for me, uh, to say without a shadow of a doubt, I know that, uh, uh, that Robert D. Ross Jr. Uh, is walking the streets of gold today because he had a testimony of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to know Jesus Christ as a 13-year-old boy in August of 1980. I, I want that story told. I want that story memorized. Why? That's one generation declaring to another generation the things that God's done for us. Amen. God's been good, and, and I like uh, uh, we ought to be rehearsing to our children all the things that God's done, the, the answers to prayer, the blessings he's bestowed upon us, the, the good things that he's done for us. Look at verse number 5. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works, and men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. Again, we're God's PR department. We ought to be declaring God's greatness. He's a great God. To those that say we, uh, we, our, our universe arrived here by way of Big Bang, I say, no, 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 we, we got here by a, a, a wonderful act of, a, uh, of creation, by a loving uh, creator, amen, and he put everything in motion. I, I want to testify of his great acts. God hung the stars and the moon and the sun also, and, and God uh, made every living thing. I mean, that, that's, uh, that came by way of God's hand. We declare his greatness to every generation. If we were to drop down a couple verses to verse number 11. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. That's the promotion of God. This is what God's done. And there ought to be no secret about that. We ought to be promoting him. Sometimes we sing as a scripture song, Psalm 89, verse 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Amen. We ought to be singing and testifying, promoting God's greatness. Psalm 96.3, the Bible says, Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonderful works among all people. That's our job. As far as thanksgiving goes, what are some of these principles we see in Psalm 105? The praise, whether that be uh, giving thanks to him. God is the object of our gratitude, singing unto him. He is the object of our singing. He's also the object of our praise. Glory in his holy name. We see the prayer there calling upon his name and, and seeking the Lord. That's the, the, the asking, seeking, and knocking and, and the rewards that are promised for those that do those things, the promise of prayer. And lastly, the, the promoting of God, making known his deeds among the people and talking of all his wonderful, wonderful works and remembering and stirring up those remembrances of his marvelous works that he hath done. That's the promoting of God. Our thanksgiving is a very wonderful object and something that's not to be reserved for a day or for a month, but it ought to be something that's part and parcel of every one of our days. So let's let's praise him. Let, let's make sure we're praying to him and, and speaking with him, and let's also make sure we're promoting him so that his praise and his thanksgiving can resound wherever we go and wherever we find ourselves.